Hello friends, this video on thermal properties of matter part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 14 before going ahead with part 15. Now let us, uh, let us look at a problem based on calorie meter. <clears throat> it says a sphere of aluminium of 0.047 kg placed for sufficient time in a vessel containing boiling water so that the sphere is at 100 degree Celsius. It is then immediately transferred to 0.14 kg copper calorie meter containing 0.25 kg of water at 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature of water rises and attains a steady state at 23 degrees Celsius. Calculate the specific heat capacity of aluminum. Now see, here there are two scenarios. In the first scenario or in the initial scenario, what happens? This aluminum sphere is placed in a vessel containing boiling water. That is, here aluminum is placed in a vessel containing water. Right? In the second scenario, we have the aluminum sphere transferred to a copper calorimeter which contains water. So here again, the aluminum sphere is in contact with the copper calorimeter containing water. Right? These are the two scenarios. Now it says that the temperature, now as you know when this aluminium sphere is kept in this vessel and when it is transferred to this copper calorimeter, the transfer of heat will keep taking place continuously because there is a temperature difference. But the problem says that the temperature of water rises and attains a steady state at 23 degrees Celsius. That means the final temperature is 23 degrees Celsius because this is the final temperature which is attained after transfer of heat. That means when the system attains this temperature, there is no further transfer of heat. Now let us look at the first part first. That is initially when the aluminium sphere is placed in a vessel with boiling water. In that, at that time, what is the mass? Mass is 0.047 kg. So this is the mass of the system. What is the initial temperature of the system? It is 100 degree Celsius. What would be the final temperature? Final temperature would be the temperature of attaining the steady state that is 23 degree Celsius. Right? So what would be the change in temperature that is delta T? That would be 77 degree Celsius. Now let us suppose that the specific heat capacity of aluminium is denoted by S A N. So what would be the amount of heat lost by aluminium sphere? It is very obvious that the heat is lost by aluminium sphere because initially the sphere was at 100 degrees Celsius. And after attaining a steady state, it is at 23 degrees Celsius. That means there is, there must be a loss of heat, right? See, please note that here I am not talking about only the sphere. I am talking about the system which contains aluminium sphere plus water. So here, the amount of heat lost will be M into S into delta T. So this will be M that is 0 0.047 into S A N into delta T. Now let us look at the next scenario where we have the aluminium sphere in a copper calorimeter containing water. So in this case, so in this case, what would be the total amount of heat absorbed by the system? In this case, amount of heat absorbed by water plus calorimeter. This is the entire system that is water plus calorimeter is the system. So what would be the amount of heat absorbed by the water plus calorimeter? 
Because see, what happens in this case basically is the amount of heat lost by the aluminum sphere is equal to the amount of heat absorbed by the calorimeter system that is water plus calorimeter. So what is the amount of heat that is absorbed by the water plus calorimeter? That would be the amount of heat absorbed by water plus the amount of heat absorbed by the calorimeter. So what would be the amount of heat absorbed by the water? Mass of water into specific heat capacity of water into change in temperature. Now what is the mass of water? Mass of water is 0 0.25 kg. What is specific heat of water? Specific heat of water is 4.18 into 10 to the power 8 joule per kg per Kelvin. That is a standard value. And what is the change in temperature? If you see for this water the initial temperature was 20 degrees Celsius and the final temperature was 23 degrees Celsius. So change in temperature would be 3 degree Celsius because the initial temperature was 20 degree Celsius and the final temperature was 23 degree Celsius. Now similarly what would be the amount of heat which is absorbed by the copper calorimeter that would be the mass of the calorimeter multiplied by the specific heat capacity of copper multiplied by the change in temperature. So what is the mass of the calorimeter? It is 0 0.14 kgs. What is the specific heat of copper? That is 0 0.386 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by the change in temperature which is again 3 degrees Celsius. So now we know amount of heat absorbed by water and also the amount of heat absorbed by the calorimeter. So as we discussed, heat gained by any system, heat gained by the second system should be equal to the heat lost by the first system. So we can say that what was the heat gained by the second system? It was equal to QW plus Q calorie meter. This was equal to the amount of heat lost by the aluminium sphere. That was 0 0.047 into S for AL into 77. Or we can write this as 0 0.25 into 4.18 into 10 to the power 8 into 3 plus 0 0.14 into 0 0.386 into 10 to the power 3 into 3 is equal to 0 0.047 into SAL into 77. So from this we can calculate the value of SAL and it comes out to be 0 0.911 kilojoule per kg per Kelvin. So this is the specific heat capacity of aluminium. So I hope you understood this. Let us have a quick review. What happened in this case? In this case there was a sphere of aluminium which was placed in a vessel containing boiling water so that the temperature of the sphere is at 100 degrees Celsius. This aluminium sphere was kept in the boiling water so that the sphere is at 100 degrees Celsius, right? Because the water was boiling water. Now the sphere was transferred to a 0 0.14 kg calorie meter where there was water at a lesser temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. So think it logically. When a sphere which was at 100 degrees Celsius is transferred to a vessel where water is at 20 degrees Celsius, what will happen? Heat transfer will take place from that sphere to the water. So the water will start gaining heat and the sphere will start losing heat. So what we have told here is the amount of heat lost by the sphere is equal to the amount of heat gained by the water. 
Now, since the water is also in contact with the calorie, copper calorimeter, which has certain mass, therefore we say that heat is absorbed by water plus the calorimeter and heat is lost by the aluminium sphere. So what we did, we first calculated the amount of heat which is lost by the aluminium sphere. Then we calculated the amount of heat that is absorbed by the water and the plus the calorimeter system. And then we equated the both. Now let us look at what do we mean by change of state. Till now we discussed about specific heat capacity where such that there is no change of state taking place. Now let us discuss change of state and properties relating to change of state. Transition from one state of matter to another is known as change of state. Right? That is, when we talk of states of matter, we know that there are three states of matter. Solid, liquid, vapor. So transition from solid to liquid or liquid to vapor or vapor to liquid or liquid to solid. So any transition is known as a change of state. Now for different change of states that is for change of state from solid to liquid we have a different term for liquid to solid we have a different term which we will discuss in detail hereafter. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.